Hello and welcome to the BFSI.com. My name is Amol Dethi and in this FinTech Diary episode, I have with me Gaurav Kumar, the founder and CEO of Credit Avenue. Gaurav, glad to have you. Thanks a lot, Amol, for having me. Thank you so much, Gaurav. So, you know, to begin with, uh, now, you know, it's a time to get into the lending space far more aggressively. And I can see the rally is towards, you know, the credit space or a lending space. But I think you started itself with the credit where a lot of fintechs who started with the payment and the wallet now entering into the credit or a lending space. So to begin with, give us some sense or some brief about why did you thought of entering in a space which was not covered very aggressively? Obviously, in a way, that's a good solution point, but I'm sure there could have been a lot of challenges. So why did you choose credit as a space to enter and not a payment or wallet when everybody was jumping into it? So uh, this is now my fourth startup. I, I think I've been now in the in the debt and lending space for the last 16 years. And uh, one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we exist is to deepen debt markets, right? The markets, uh, as far as credit, as you rightly said, has not deepened significantly. Uh, and uh, Amol, when we were looking at it, we actually took a, a very different view within credit, right? And uh, I'll just share that with you. So uh, what we saw was even players who were in credit, they were largely focused on building the marketplace, right? Whereas us at Credit Avenue today, we actually invested a lot of our time in building three stacks in parallel. So the, the top stack is the marketplace, right? But the marketplace today is supported by a very strong operating system, right? And it is also supported by a very strong fulfillment platform. Right. So which means that once the actors on the marketplace decide to choose a product and they go through their discovery phase, each product today, our platform offers uh, five products uh, right from loans to a bond to co-lending to supply chain uh, to secretization. Right. And depending on the product you choose, it takes you to the corresponding operating system. Right. And once a transaction is done. Uh, till the last rupee is paid back, we monitor both the credit as well as transaction. Now, the reason being that the challenge in credit has been on providers of capital, right? Uh, and providers of capital don't come because they are not getting the adequate infrastructure to support the underlying, you know, overall piece of credit discovery as well as fulfillment. So our choice was very clear that we wanted to and ensure that we are building something which allows the market to deepen and penetrate on the credit side, right? And, and that's the reason why we, we took the hard choice of building the operating system fulfillment and then build the marketplace on top. But how has been the response now? Because, you know, the corporate loan or the debt market as a space is, is not very uh, dynamic on the digital side, right? Uh, on the retail side, it's still, uh, what again, it makes sense because there are personal loans, there are small loans. So how has been the response to you? I mean, the credit avenue specifically. Uh, very good, I would say. Uh, you know, the, the product, we we are a two-year-old, uh, you know, company. We started building that, uh, we call it Cred Loan. So that Cred Loan product, what's the vision? We are actually taking the entire enterprise corporate loan market to pre-approval, right? So today we are deeply sitting with banks on one side and, you know, enterprises. We have now over 3,000 enterprises uh, on our platform. Now the core is, uh, you know, unlike retail, as you very rightly said, the enterprise or corporate loan market has not moved to pre-approval. In fact, if you need liquidity, you need to wait for 30, 60, 90, 120 days for a bank to act, evaluate and give you money, right? So depending on the type of enterprise today, our success has been good. I just can share some numbers with you. This year itself, we will do over a billion dollar of disbursement on the corporate loan platform itself, right? Across manufacturing, across services. So, uh, and just to share a comparable number, last year we had done close to 150 million, right? And then that number has gone to a billion dollars this year, right? And it's going to grow five to six X because now gradually post the pandemic, we are seeing a lot of traction coming back in the corporate loan market, right? And, and given the product stack we have built, it will just accelerate that uh, pain point, which most of them had uh, in terms of credit evaluation, as well as discovery on that side. Okay. I'm good that you shared that number. We can see that in the many folds uh, on, on, on that part, Gaurav. But, you know, uh, tell me something about, uh, you know, the partnerships that you have with the banks and the finance companies or NBFCs. How does actually this work? I mean, 
once you create the maybe a uh, generate a link or maybe generate a lead you know how long does it take uh, for the banks or the finance companies and you to you know actually this was the funds to the borrower uh, what is actually the unusual thing that you are trying to offer here to the customer a great question i think uh, i'll i'll say our biggest value prop today is that uh, the overall unified api which we have built so today if a bank is working with us on our platform and if we integrate with them right they don't have to integrate with any player on the other side right so for example if bank x is integrated with credit avenue right they get access to everybody who is sitting on my marketplace whether it is an enterprise customer or an nbfc or a housing finance or a fintech right they get access to everybody so they don't have to go and integrate one on one with any player in the country right and after that for each product the product stack has been built to solve for the bank's pain point right so just to just to play it out for example today we are the largest co lending marketplace in the country today right we do over 70000 loans per day right and and the co lending market is just taking off one of the biggest pain point we are solving amol is once a bank integrates with us as we speak they get access to 42 fintech and nbfcs who are already integrated with me right and we are integrating almost six to seven partners on the other side and and same for a uh, enterprise uh, fi or a fintech once they are integrated with me they don't have to integrate with anybody on the lender side they get access to anybody whom they want to work with and meet the, their lending criteria right so i think this is the single most a uh, important aspect which provides both unification and interoperability to both sides of the platform right and that's why we are able to solve for very tough pain points in products like co lending and supply chain yeah yeah no yeah, sure so uh, could you also tell about the disbursement time and the partnerships yeah so today uh, on the on the client side partnerships we are fully self serve so it it takes if you are coming you your profile creation you know on an average you know it, it takes anywhere between 10 minutes to an hour for you to set yourself on the platform as as a borrower uh, we have a fully self serve api stack right so today you know some of the clients have actually deeply integrated with us in a matter of two days and have gone live on our api stack right and once you are functional uh, it, it depends on the uh, product amol so what we see is for example in co lending supply chain it's all real time end to end right so the loans get pulled through the api uh, 97% of our transactions today are all straight through processing mm -hmm. right on co lending and supply chain right as far as uh, abs platform is concerned or bonds is concerned or loans is concerned the current tat goes anywhere between a day to almost 2 uh, to 3 weeks depending on the type of transaction so another question that comes to my mind gorav is because you are operating in you know corporate loan which is a, a segment where you know the loans are most of the time is very risky uh, even the huge loan and the huge borrowers the big borrowers like your dj malia you know don't you know repay the loans and you know they are out of the country so the stress in the corporate loan is always huge so my question to you is when you are actually you know kind of connecting the banker and you know helping these borrowers how do you actually you know manage the whole uh, the risk analysis or the credit risk because bank will have its different due diligence processes i'm sure you know you are integrating that but isn't that a big challenge for you if yes how do you solve it again a great question so the call we have taken is today uh, and and that's why we are deepening the market just to share with you even on our uh, loans platform right uh, on the enterprise side or corporate side our average ticket size of loans is already close to 5 crores today right and and because of our infrastructure uh, the banks today can set up their entire credit infrastructure on top of our infrastructure mm. right so right from uh, initiation to fraud detection to pattern recognition to their entire credit evaluation to generating their own cmas mm. because every lender today has their unique cma or evaluation format okay. right so all of that can be built on top of our platform most importantly uh, we see one of the reasons at credit avenue our, our thought process have been different uh, we attribute credit cost or credit loss in segments like this to three factors and not one factor mm -hmm. so for us unlike other fintechs a good underwriting is only a starting point so the lender sees an underwriting score 
after you disburse to a corporate every corporate on our platform is reassessed reunderwritten every quarter so if you have used our platform as a lender you always get a dynamic view rather than a static view of a customer okay. right so early warning signals all of that is what you start seeing very very early and and third is collection so we also have a collection stack embedded on, on our platform which is all digital right so which loans can default if they default you know how do you approach uh through digital collection right uh, i think the entire stack actually makes it far far more uh you know i would say robust for a lender because the lender is getting a 360 degree view and is not getting short sighted by just underwriting at, at the point of disbursement okay okay not a dear points you know now how how do you think the whole the co lending model is also shifting up because you know the credit that is the most you know talked model where nbfc is banks and fintechs are partnering far more aggressively and going ahead with co met co lending models how how do you see the potential of the co lending model and how do you actually work for that uh i think you know our view is we were the first uh, player to enter the co lending market uh, as a platform uh, because today you have a lot of co lending player but at credit avenue we are the only co lending uh, marketplace or platform mm -hmm. uh to share with you i would pick out three themes why we think co lending is going to be the the biggest asset class as we move forward right much larger than any other product uh, is for a different reasons i'm also if i give you a trend from last year to this year and what has changed right mm -hmm. so today at credit avenue before i share the trend last year we used to do 2000 loans a day now we are doing almost 70000 loans a day right okay. uh, across multiple products uh, on on our platform uh, now look at the trend co lending till last year was largely a product which was being used by small nbfcs or fintech to partner with banks mm. that trend has completely changed right so today in co lending the biggest trend setters are the largest of housing finance and nbfcs who are going live mm. right so today and some of it is in the public domain so today whether it is likes of india bulls or you know likes of aadhar or some of the largest players in this space are the ones which are going to bring in a lot of velocity to this particular product uh, which was missing last year so that's a biggest trend shift the largest of nbfc's housing finance are entering this space mm -hmm. right uh, the second is uh, just the drive which we are seeing from the lending partners right they are comfortable with the product uh just for the reason because there is a lot of regulatory change and supportive change which has been made by the regulator right regulator has been very very responsible uh, responsive on this and and we thank them uh they came in with the uh, variant 2 of co lending which we call as the clm2 right which is almost akin to a, a direct assignment right which allowed a lot of flexibility for the partners to scale this product right so either you do real time disbursement to through clm1 or you can actually use clm2 and scale the product right so i think the second theme is the, the regulatory changes has made a massive shift right the third is i think post the pandemic there is a lot of focus on retail mm. right and then some of the retail asset classes have come out very well right so there is a lot of demand today on secured as far as uh, you know asset class is concerned whether it is housing or it is you know a loan against property or gold uh, and some of the other products so co lending is here to stay and our platform has taken away the most important pain point of integrating one after the other right because you know if you are integrating it it takes you many many months to go live with a bank or a partner on the other side right so that's the most important aspect which we have been able to solve through our platform okay uh, noted gorov i think valid points and integrated platforms are actually kind of boosting the potential of credit i can um, you know absolutely understand that so when you are saying that from 2000 to 17000 so big journey or it's a very remarkable number and i can see you know the whole credit space is actually you know uh, you know having a party you know the loans have been you know giving in like big numbers but credit is not just about this person right credit is more about the collection and a lot of companies failed you know in collection and they actually wrapped up their shops in many cases obviously the loan will be on maybe a bank or the nbfc's name but what is the collection strategy that you must have integrated here or how do you actually analyze the whole collection strategy because until and unless you do not you know receive that emi or installment or repayment uh, you know it, it, it's not a successful loan so what is your strategy over there again a great question not too many uh, people ask this 
uh, deep inside question. So to, to share with you, I think uh, the approach, right? I think, as I said, uh, overall credit cost is a function of three things, your ability to underwrite well, right? Now there, if you look at most of the lenders have more or less the same policy, but they have different outcome as far as credit cost is concerned, right? So the differentiator on credit cost of one bank or one NBFC versus the other is more to do with your ability to be in touch with the customer, right? And reassess the customer on an ongoing basis because the customer's credit profile is changing after you have given a loan, right? And third and most importantly, if, if she is not able to pay, how do you get money back, right? Which is the collection stack, right? So today on our platform, we have invested significantly in these two going beyond the underwriting because underwriting more or less everybody is using the, the same or the or pretty similar policy as far as credit policies are concerned across the lending ecosystem, right? So today on, on collections, we have a, a significant investment today you know, where we provide the collection stack to partners uh, which is completely digital in nature. Uh, we offer three products, right from a trace product to a smart collect product to a smart plus plus product, which ensures that through very deep data capabilities, right, which customer can default, right? If the customer is defaulting, then how do you engage digitally? How do you get this, uh, you know, money back? Our experience has been today on, on the collection platform, uh, there are close to uh, 24 million customers, 2.4 million uh, crore customers right, who have been managed digitally, uh, the biggest driver is cost and, and the success, right? So the digital platform today is able to do this at almost 30% of cost than what the ecosystem is doing outside, right? And the pandemic has actually accelerated this, right? So completely with you, I, I think that's the core differentiator, which is your yeah. dynamic underwriting and collection stack. Okay, no great points, Goro. Uh, tell me something about the product categories or you know the loan categories where do you see the more demand what kind of borrowers are there and what are they borrowing for have you by any chance analyzed this data yeah so i, I think overall the uh, last i would say it is more a function of uh, the lenders and their comfort uh, so on the demand side obviously the demand has been very uh, very uh, high and as the pandemic has ended i think the a lot of consumption demand has come back right but we are seeing uh, uh, two early trends, right? One is on the enterprise or corporate loan, right? I, I think now we are seeing a lot of resertions. We are seeing a lot of demand coming back, both in terms of manufacturing capex, right? Which was missing till a year back. And that's why you're seeing that reflecting in our numbers as well, right? So till a year back, the demand was largely service, which is now changed towards manufacturing and capex as well, right? Second is just on retail co-lending. Right, so there, there is a lot of demand coming in across, a uh, very clear trend, uh, which we had not anticipated, very clear demand coming even on the consumer side, right? Especially on the personal loan side, uh, we are seeing a lot of demand and we are seeing a lot of demand on the secured asset side, which is largely mortgage, uh, which is housing loan as well as secured lab. So I would say these are the uh, three categories where we are seeing a lot of demand coming uh, post the pandemic. Okay, okay. Uh, noted points, uh, Goro. Considering the rise in the you know, credit space, considering the many challenge uh, changes and developments happening in the credit space because everybody wants to go for a digital. Uh, in fact, digital lending has become a norm in the whole banking and the, you know, the finance space now. What are the major changes do you see happening in the credit space maybe in the next two to three years? I think uh, we will see some trends accelerating. Uh, I, I would say uh, just the partnership uh, between banks and the ecosystem will accelerate very rapidly, right? So you will see a very high degree of, uh, you know, ecosystem play coming in on the co-lending side, right? Uh, the other piece is on, to our mind, on supply chain, right? Because today, if you look at, this is the entire supply chain logistic piece is becoming the backbone. Right, which is supporting all the ancillary sectors, right? So I think what you will start seeing, uh, and we have a vantage point, a lot of credit will start flowing in the sub-segments, right? And you will see a lot of credit now going into supply chain. It will start going into, you know, logistic. It will start going into other places, right? In infra is one where we are already seeing early signs, right? So I think 
these are the key pieces you will see. The second part is how do you see credit flowing in below a certain rating category? So I, I think they're a very early sign, but I, I think you will see a lot of deepening happening even on the lower credit side, right? Uh, from a rating perspective, because the lending ecosystem now, given the access of data they have, their ability to monitor it far more real time than what they used to, is also allowing them to go down the risk curve faster than what we have seen. And, and lastly, I think we have been in the most stressful of the credit period last two years, right? So everybody has seen their portfolio stress tested and, and they know now what's working, what's not working. Right, so I think you will see a lot of uh, growth coming in on the on the retail side. Okay, but by any chance, aren't you worried? Because you know, uh, the question often comes to my mind is on one side. You know, I mean, I, I I mean, it's nice to know when lenders saying there is a growth, but on the other side, you know, the devil's advocate. If I play here, the question will be, oh, will there be higher NPS? Will there be you know risks? Will there be delinquencies? Will there be slippages? So by any chance, do you sense something like that, considering the pandemic where people have you know, lost their jobs and borrowed huge money by, you know, mortgaging their assets or whatever they could have and taken huge personal loans. So do you by any chance send something weird there? Uh, I think, uh, again, a great question. I think I will segment that into different categories, right? So today at Credit Avenue, the customer profile is very varied because we look at the entire spectrum. Uh, our view is on, on some of it, uh, you had seen, for example, and you're right, and I completely agree with you that, for example, the entire growth demand which came in gold during the entire pandemic, right, was also a response to the emergency needs, right? Because if somebody is taking a gold loan, that's the last resort for that person to really go if, if she has not got even a personal loan or a consumption loan or a microfinance loan, right? So I, I we think that you're right. I think some of the segments, the growth happened because there was some degree of gap in consumption uh, and, and some slippages in terms of income profile. Uh, but those customers are largely serviced on the microfinance side or on the gold side, right? Uh, today to share with you, I think on the personal loan side and the BNPL side, most of the players are largely going after uh, people who are largely employed in the IT space or, or services space, right? Uh, the difference we are seeing Amol is Although they are going down in terms of the income levels, so they might be fine engaging with somebody who has an income of say 30,000 or 40,000 rupee, but a clear difference is which sectors they are employed in. Right? And, and these are might be new to credit, but these are employed in very defensible sectors where the job loss or the portability of you know, employment is not very difficult. Right? Uh, and lastly, to your point, I think the on the secured side, uh, given the, to be candid, I think the LTVs we are seeing on our platform, right? the LTVs today are very low. We are actually seeing an LTV of around 28, 30%, whereas the regulation today allows you to go up to 75%, right? So although the growth is coming in, but just the LTV and, and the equity portion of what has been invested by the borrower is quite significant. So we are not seeing a risk of over leveraging on the secured side. Right. Okay. Uh, valid points, meaningful one, Toro. Tell me something about Credit Avenue. Where do you want to take Credit Avenue forward now? What are the maybe expansion plans that you have or what is the outlook for the Credit Avenue going ahead? So on, on Credit Avenue, I think uh, we are investing quite a lot uh, across the products. I think on enterprise loan side, we want to take that market to pre-approval. Uh, on co-lending, as I was sharing, you know, we are very large. We are making a lot of investment to make the entire uh, unification. Uh, some good news, uh, you know, we just signed with uh, Infosys and Finacle. So we are jointly building the uh, adapters for the banking ecosystem on co-lending, right? And, and we look forward to building more meaningful partnerships to enable banks to embrace this product seamlessly. Uh, on supply chain, uh, we have a different vision. I think supply chain, although we have scaled up and, and we are doing well, but our vision on supply chain is to take that product to a limit or a card product uh, from the current invoice product because the invoice product for a customer is extremely painful, right? So how do we take this to more a limit-based or a card-based product on supply chain, I think is going to be our core focus. Mm -hmm. On uh, on uh, fixed income, our focus is largely on retail investor. Uh, we have invested quite a lot and build our B two B two C partnerships. We are today the largest player in the fixed income space, 
so we are making a lot of investments there. Uh, we just uh, added the collection stack, uh, uh, you know, on our platform. We are looking at one more acquisition in the credit SaaS space, where this company currently works in, uh, you know, public data, third-party data, fraud detection, you know, all, all the validation checks which we run. So we will try and also integrate them onto our platform in the coming months. Uh, so as far as credit revenue is concerned, uh, our focus will be largely in growth, in growing these uh, six products. As far as the collection stack is concerned, Amol, uh, the collection stack is also available currently outside India in the Middle East. 10% uh, of the revenue comes from that market, right? So we are doubling down and investing significantly on the collections business. Uh, so you will see some degree of global expansion coming on the collection stack. As far as credit revenue is concerned, we'll largely double down in the Indian market for the next 12 to 24 months. Okay. So uh, when you're trying to acquire it and when you plan to double down, you know, are you raising more funds? Uh, are you, uh, or maybe you have huge plans or maybe big plans like other fintech companies which are entering the capital market, something like that by any chance in your mind? Uh, so uh, we raised a fairly large uh, you know, capital three months back, uh, you know, uh, we, we ended up raising close to 700 odd crores of capital. And, and given that we are a fairly high uh, gross margin business, uh, we are very capital efficient. Uh, so some of the capital which we raised will go in terms of growth and, and in acquisition. Uh, you know, a few months down the line, if, if there is a need, we might raise more capital. But just to share with you, given that uh, we are very capital efficient, right? I think uh, we don't burn capital. So I think uh, the capital which came in in September currently is good enough, uh, but we might we might raise if we have the right partners coming on board or we have more opportunities which we see in the adjacent space. But no plans for an IPO as of now. Uh, no, no, we have a long way to go. Uh, we, we want to remain private and and build and execute well over the next four five years. Okay, so the acquisition part that you said you already identified the company or are you in a process of spotting someone uh, like that? Uh, no, we have we have identified currently. Uh, we have we have signed the uh, definitive term sheet. Uh, it's it's currently confidential, but you know we will be able to share more hopefully by first week of March. Uh, so we are uh, doing one. Uh, we have acquired that. We will be able to share with you very soon. Uh, okay. It's already it's already done. Uh, we're just waiting for some of the last legs to get over. On the credit SaaS, uh, it should be done in in March. And I would be able to share more with you uh, in the coming month. Okay, sure. Uh, my last question is specifically again about the industry, uh, Gaurav. Like I said, you know, everybody is getting into the credit bandwagon. You know, I do not know sometimes, you know, uh, how many of them will be successful because most of them are, uh, you know, chasing to be a, you know, carry that IPO tag or you know, want to be a unicorn tag. And, uh, uh, you know, how sustainable those models, are, I really don't know. Uh, but the point is, everybody is betting really, really high on the credit space. What do you think? What will make the fintech successful? Those who are operating in 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 a in a credit area going ahead, because ultimately, you know, if you also become an NBFC, then you come under the regulation, and your half of your energy will go into the following regulations for at least you know a couple of months initially, right? So it's not going to be easy journey when you are actually going to achieve a huge growth. So how? Or what do you think will make, you know, really sustainable for the fintechs operating in this credit space going ahead? Very deep insights. And, and uh, your, your question resonates so much. And I, I think, you know, uh, we are disrupting the space from within, right? Because, you know, I have been in this space for the last uh, 16 years and I can't agree more. Uh, the DNA in lending is very different than payments, right? And in lending, you make profits early, losses come later. Right. And, and you can't grow month on month. Right. So it's very difficult to grow a, a lending business month on month because, as you rightly said, it's all about credit and collections and money coming back. Right. Uh, so to, to my mind, uh, what what will entail is to have a very different DNA to what the DNA has been in other adjacent space as far as credit is concerned, because if you have a setback in credit, the providers of capital desert your marketplace. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so they don't come because they lose trust. So I think the most important thing is uh, building defensible lending business and then not just a high growth lending business. I think that to my mind is the most important aspect. Uh, and it, it requires time to build a, a lending marketplace or a, or a lending platform uh, compared to you know, 
for example, an e-commerce platform or payments. So I think that to my mind is a, is a very, very key differentiator and invest a lot in the operating system and invest a lot in the infrastructure beyond the marketplace, right? To ensure that the marketplaces are sustainable uh, and, and you are focused more on not just disbursement, but money coming back, right? right. So I think uh, th this will be a very clear uh, test for all the fintechs, including us uh, in the lending space that is our business defensible, is our business genuinely focused on uh, the asset quality, the credit cost and, and money coming back to the providers of capital. Uh, because especially given the direction which regulation is taking, uh, where you might not be in a position to provide first loss, et cetera, right? Mm. And it genuinely tests the, the quality of what is flowing in through your platform. Okay, I think I'm done here, Gaurav. Uh, but let me take one, you know, update here that you mentioned about the Infosys and Pinnacle deal. You know, how will it actually pan out? What benefits will you get? And, you know, how is the uh, overall, maybe, uh, could you share the highlights of this deal? How will it actually work? And maybe some anecdotes of it? Absolutely. So uh, I think uh, today, if you look at uh, Pinnacle has been instrumental in, in terms of building the entire core banking, which is powering most of the banks. Uh, the way we are going about this partnership is today, uh, the, the partnership will allow them and us to build adapters. Uh, so uh, for example, if a bank, which is already on Finnacle, right, and they want to be powered through the co-lending platform, we can switch them on very quickly, right? So the time to market is almost, uh, you know, zero. And second, any change we make in our product stack, right, gets maintained on a real-time basis through our partnership with Finnacle, right? So the, the, the banking ecosystem will not get burdened about how the overall stack will be maintained over a period of time, right? So not only just time to market, but also enabling uh, this. And, and lastly, uh, just the closure of the entire stack, right? Because everything is pushed through Finnacle at a GL level. So uh, all the recon and all of those pieces come together, uh, making it extremely seamless and efficient for banks to scale this product. Okay, but, but what is the partnership model here? Uh, the partnership model is, uh, you know, we are jointly building the adapter, right? So, you know, Finnacle is building the adapter which will be used by banks for the co-lending product, right? Uh, and, and there will be a revenue share between us and Finnacle for this. Okay, okay. Uh, noted your points, Karo. I think uh, that's it from my side. And uh, thank you so much for your time and sharing all the insights about the credit industry, Gaurav. Thank you so much for taking time out and joining us at FinTech Diary. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you so much for having me and, 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 and great insightful question. Thanks a lot.